So today we're going to be looking at our example of a small scale ecosystem in the UK and the example that we've studied in class is Mr Sparshat's pond. So an ecosystem is a complex natural system made up of plants, animals and the environment in which they live in. So the energy that is provided for ecosystems comes from the sun. That's really important and that goes to our first level of our ecosystem and that is our producers. And in Mr. Sparshat's pond, we have got lilies, a type of plants that live in the water, and they photosynthesize, generating energy from the sun and nutrients they collect from the water. On the edge of Mr. Sparshat's pond, we also find reeds and bulrushes because he has got a very large pond and we also have some grasses so these plants are producers and they convert energy from the sun via photosynthesis into um, carbohydrates for growth and these plants are then consumed in the first level of consumption by some of the insects that you will find in the water. And we have got in Mr. Sparshat's pond the great diving beetle. From our great diving beetle, it gets a little bit more complex because we're not just showing a food chain, which would be a single um, line of connections, but actually it's more of a food web. So one of the creatures that likes to eat a great diving beetle is a duck. And clearly, my duck is looking great swimming on the water. There he is, ready for his next snack on a great diving beetle. And they also consume plants. But the great diving beetle is not safe from within the water because there are fish in Mr. Sparshat's pond that also like to snack on the great diving beetle. There they are, very happy looking fish. And I believe the fish that Mr. Sparshat has um, include perch. Now from here, the fish can also be consumed by a bird that lives up above the water and I know this causes Mr. Sparshat lots of annoyance because he's had to put a net over his pond to stop the herons from getting at his fish. So there's a heron having a look trying to find the fish. So we can see we've got connections from the sun to our producers, our consumers and we've got more than just a food chain, it should be a single set of connections, links along a chain, but there is more of a food web. Now when uh, an animal dies, or a creature dies, a species dies, we'll represent this by one of our dead fish, they decompose and their bodies break down through decomposers which are found in um, the ecosystem by bacteria or um, fungi. So I'm going to draw a little bacterial cell or you might find um, mushrooms for example will do this, um, toadstools will do this up on the land as well. And they have a really important role because they break down the dead organisms and release their nutrients back into the ecosystem so that the producers can then use those nutrients to grow. And you can see that everything is connected and they are linked together in this ecosystem. So energy from the sun is taken by the, the lily and the reeds. They convert the energy through photosynthesis. The plants are consumed by the great diving beetle, who in turn is consumed by the perch 
or the duck and the perch is then eaten by the heron and when these creatures die their bodies are decomposed through the decomposers such as bacteria or fungi and the nutrients are released back into the ecosystem so our example is Mr Sparshat's pond which is a pond in the UK.